lecture. Um, this week we'll talk about, uh, we'll continue our discussion of, of uh, evolution. So as a review from last week's lecture, um, uh, we talked about Charles Darwin and his um, idea uh, of his book in the, on, 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 the, on the origin of species. So he proposed that natural selection is the mechanism for evolution. And the evolution will create the diversity of life and uh, it is through speciation. Um, it is a process that one species can become two or more species. So species in Latin words means a kind of appearance, kind of appearance. Um, we define species as a group of populations whose members have the potential to interbreed with one another and produce fertile offspring. That means offspring that can also reproduce. So we define species using the uh, reproduction as a definition. So um, first criteria is that they should be able to interbreed with one another. And the second definition is that their offspring is also fertile. So um, because you, we are, when we use this uh, reproductive uh, definition, uh, it will be um, uh, it will be very easy for scientists um, without molecular technology to define the species to classify species. So, um, but this biological species concept that means uh, using the reproduction as the criteria cannot be applied when they are the asexual organism like unicellular, unicellular protists um, and also fossils because fossils um, we cannot we cannot assume that the, um, the, the animal in the fossil they can interbreed and but but um, we can also define species by physical trait and molecular data, which is something that we'll talk about uh, in, 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 the, in, in the next few slides, and also common ancestor. We use physical trait and molecular data to find out their common ancestor. And we classify them as a tree of life. Um, uh, it's like the, uh, we call it uh, cladistics. The physical trait here, we talked about it last time. Physical trait, we have homologous structure, analogous structure, and vestigial structure. Molecular data is uh, basically uh, is a modern technology. We compare the DNA or the genomic sequence of the different animal. If the two animals have highly consistent genomic sequence, we can basically assume that they, they are the same species. And to go back to our first uh, definition to use the reproduction as the criteria, um, we have reproductive barrier that can prevent individual to uh, interbreed. So we will talk about the different reproductive barrier. We have pre-psychotic barrier, pre-psychotic barrier, meaning that uh, before they can uh, mate, before they can mate, there are uh, situation that they cannot um, that prevent them to make for example temporal isolation habitat isolation and behavioral isolation we talk about each one uh, uh, right now and then mating attempt even though they overcome these uh, isolation when they mate they also have other isolation mechanical isolation or gametic isolation so our, let's say after they are able to mate, then we have post-psychotic uh, or because psychotic post-psychotic barrier. 
That means after they are able to make their ops, they, they will have difficulty uh, the, in the offspring. The offspring will have different issues. Reduce hybrid viability, reduce hybrid fertility, and hybrid breakdown. So all these may affect their offspring, even though they can mate. And then if they can overcome all these, all these uh, barriers, then the, the offspring will be viable. That means they can live uh, fertile. That means they can uh, reproduce. If they can produce this kind of offspring, then we, we will say that the uh, individual of the different species here, they are from the same species because they can, um, they can interbreed and also their offspring is viable and fertile. Now let's talk about the pre-psychotic barrier. Pre-psychotic barrier, pre meaning that before zygote, meaning that before the sperm can fertilize the egg. So before the sperm can fertilize the egg, there are some barriers prevent that happen. Um, these are the uh, pre-psychotic barrier, temporal isolation, habitat, high isolation, behavior isolation, and then mechanical and gametic. So even though after, even though they can meet each other and mate, um, there are still isolation when they are when they can mate. So the first example is this one: temporal isolation. Um, this is an ex this is the uh, western spotted skunk. This is the eastern spotted skunk. So, of course, from the name, you you it suggests that this eastern uh, this western spotted skunk they live in the west coast of the America. This one lives in the east coast of the America. Of course, they already have the um, uh, location. The, what we call is the um, habitat isolation. They already have the habitat isolation. One live in the west coast, one live in the east coast. But other than that, they have a different mating season. For example, this western spotted skunk, they mate in well uh, early early winter time. This eastern spotted skunk, they mate in the late winter time. So even if you Put them together, even if they have chance to meet with each other, because the mating times are different, the mating season is different. So they won't, uh, they won't uh, reproduce, they won't interbreed. Therefore, we classify them as different species. Habitat isolation. Habitat isolation. This is uh, another example. Of course, the previous one, the skunk. Eastern skunk and the western skunk, they are they also have this habitat isolation. But in this example, the snake, one type of snake they live in water, uh, the other type of snake live on the uh, dry land. Because of that, um, they they live in different habitat. Then they cannot mate. They cannot meet each other. They cannot mate. Then there are two different species. Behavior isolation. Last week, um, last time we talked about uh, this kind of uh, blue-footed boobies. So they have a very uh, unique uh, characteristic uh, uh, mating dance. I show you that they would lift up their feet and also they would lift up their beak. The reason is that their feet, they are blue color and the beak is also blue color. And last time I mentioned that only healthy uh, boobies can have enough energy and nutrient to develop the blue color on their webbed feet and also the blue color in, in, uh, uh, in the beak. What they are, the mating dance they're shown here is basically showing off how blue their feet are and how blue their beak are. So um, this, mating dance, this mating dance will only work with the same species, the blue for the boobies. For other species, when they see their um, mating dance, they will think that it is hilarious or it doesn't make sense to that to them. So the behavior isolation is also one one example. Mechanical isolation. Mechanical isolation is that 
um, well, you see that the genital opening cannot align. If it is the same species, then they can align. But if not, they cannot align. Uh, I usually quote a famous, uh, famous saying from O.J. Simpson case. If it doesn't fit, uh, you should uh, acquit. So this is the this is the example. If if you cannot well, if you cannot make with uh, structural differences, okay, don't force yourself into it. Gametic isolation. Even though you can so-called consummate the relationship, but the sperm and the egg, they may not fuse with each other. Probably because of different chromos chromosome number. And then, uh, for example, the sea urchin. The, this red sea urchin has diff, uh, and the, this uh, purple sea urchin, they have, their gametes cannot fuse. So there are two different species of the uh, sea urchin. Now, discussion question for you. You can think about this. Um, you can think about this before you start to look at the um, next video. Uh, I'll tell you the answer for uh, in the next video. So, if animals with the same species, do they do they face pre barrier or post barrier if they are the same species? <laughs>